This is the Sports Desk on Sin 90.7 and we are joined by a very special guest. Her name is Lily Mithen. Lily, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks for having me, Mel. Uh, good morning, Lily. No, that was Lucy, but thanks, Lily. Cool. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> nah, how are you, Lil? I can't hear you. Yeah, going really well, thank you. Um, bit cold this morning, but um, no, nah, it's a good, it's a good week. Bit We're cold, you're down in Geelong? Morning. Down in Geelong, yep, yeah, just currently sitting out the uh, front of my office. Um, not raining at this stage, so we are all good for the meantime. Fabulous. Hey, uh, before we get on to some chat about this weekend's game, wanted to ask you just off the top, they've delayed the um, AFL women's announcement yet again. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I did see that last night. Um, not sure why that call's been made, but I guess, um, you know, the AFL have stated that um, all the submissions have been really strong, so... I guess it's a good time just to um, actually look through them properly and not make a rush decision because um, AFLW, it's not going anywhere. It's only been going for a year. So if they do happen to delay this by um, however long to make the the proper decision to ensure that this season is sustainable, I think is the right decision. Yeah, I agree with you, Lily. Like It's definitely more important that the competition can be sustainable over expanding it. But... It's widely billed that Geelong has, you know, got their, their licence, you know, in the bag. What what do you do in that case, considering you play for Geelong in the VFLW? Um, yeah, really not sure. Um, at this stage, I'm contacted to the Demons, so um, I'm looking as far as um, pre-season and a few months kicking off. So um, I'm sure um, I'm going to be asked this question many, many times, <laughs> given, um, you know, my first season with the Bees and then, um, you know, growing up in Geelong and um, playing VFL there this season. But um, to be honest, it's so hard to sort of forecast what what it'll look like at the end of this season, let alone seasons to come. So um, my mind is definitely not made up. And, um, yeah, for now, I'm uh, looking forward to pulling on the red and blue. Well, I mean, we haven't even got confirmation that the Cats are even going to get an AFLW team. Don't so get Lucy's it. getting a little bit ahead of herself there. Uh, but yeah, no, enjoy getting asked that question about a thousand more times throughout your life. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but how have you found the uh, season at the Cats this year um, over in the VFL Women's? How have you found the VFL Women's Comp this year in general? I think the um, VFL Women's Comp has gone absolutely nuts, really. Like, I think um, having so many girls playing AFL come back to VFL level with so much more experience, with better fitness base and things like that. It's just um, the improvement of the league has really, really grown. I think that's really good to see, and it now gives girls who are striving to play AFL footy um, a really strong platform to then, you know, sort of immerse themselves um, with AFLW players to get that experience and everyone sort of grow up together. So I think um, the VFL competition, it's been, like, a lot closer um, in terms of competition, and uh, I think that is sort of a product of what the AFL season um, has brought to the table uh, this year. So um, there is still a lot of development to be had, and I think we saw the ones that the clubs that took the, this league really seriously um, definitely saw a massive improvement. And um, I think if more clubs can align themselves with the, like with men's AFL teams and things like that. Um, the girls are just going to develop so much more rapidly and um, we're just going to continue seeing um, the skill level improve. So it's really exciting to see where um, the VFL competition is heading um, because it's just going to make AFLW um, even better. Yeah, that does seem to be the sort of thing with it all that this sort of heightened sort of professionalism in the VFL will lead to more professionalism in the AFLW but also a better standard of play. Do you sort of see that happening as well? Yeah, for sure. I think when girls start to take it more seriously and they can actually see it themselves in a pathway leading to yeah. greater things, um, everyone is going to put their best foot forward. Um, it's even a really good platform now for, for coaches and things like that. Mm. So um, it's no longer just, you know, Maddie's dad, the coach, or, you know, <laughs> like it's, um, it's going to be someone who is actually going to go somewhere and um, they can you know, put that on their coaching resume and it actually means something. Mm. So I think um, with that too, there's um, there's a lot of opportunity for development and when everyone is striving toward higher things, um, you know, it is obviously going to improve and um, the league's just going to get better and better. 
You had a pretty good season in the AFLW. You a pretty good. Pretty good. Just pretty good. Just I think pretty good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah right. That's, that's, that's fine. fine. Yep. That's good. No so, come on, Lily. There's always room for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You were one of my favourite players oh, in, in the AFLW. That this Boys. is this is not a joke. Um, and uh, I was very excited when I saw you got that Rising Star nomination because you really held your own in that midfield that had Elisa Day, Karen Paxman, and Daisy Pierce. You know, just a few of the biggest names in the AFLW. So <laughs> <laughs> just a few. So were you excited to then get this call up for the Victorian team besides those really big names again? Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a massive honour. Um, wearing a big V is um, something that, you know, doesn't come around very often. So, And being the first State of Origin game, yeah, it's, it's so exciting. And to be named alongside some of those massive names is um, super humbling. And um, I've, you know, looked up to them for the last few years and it was honour playing with some of them at Melbourne. But, um, you know, when, you know, everyone... Um, has got a massive name in this lineup for this Saturday. Um, it's kind of pretty weird because you look at your name in there, going, "Why, why is that? Why is that name on the list?" But um, no, it's um, it's super exciting, and um, I think the state of origin tradition has been so rich in the past, and for the AFL to bring it back is a massive credit to them because hopefully we can um, do it justice this weekend. Sorry, Mel. Um... Just one question on that with the AFL bringing it back. Do you think it's pretty special that they've brought back the state of origin concept using the women's game? Yeah, I think so, definitely. I think it's um, the AFL are putting so much um, behind us women playing the game and I think um, they're continuing to flow be- support behind us and um, this is just another example of that. So um, to almost um, leverage that state of origin to also give us more exposure to is a mm-hmm. massive honour mm-hmm. because they're sort of doing everything they can to put us back in the limelight and, um, you know, give us women um, the exposure that we probably deserve and um, continue to grow the game that way. So to put, um, you know, a game labelled State of Origin on a weekend where there's no other AFL footy, the AFL and, you know, free of charge for entry and things like that, like the AFL are... Um, you know, just giving us so much room to be able to, you know, show our stuff and um, create names for ourselves. All right, Lily, what can we expect from you this weekend? I've seen you cop plenty of uh, high hits in the VFL this season. Uh, <laughs> what can I expect from you? And what can I be looking out for in general in this game? What's, what's going to be the standout? I think the standout will just be the um, the fierce contest it'll be. I think everyone that's playing is is so fierce and um, to be able to show that with, you know, subline skills, it's just going to be crazy. So the skill level will be um, to another level and um, I think that's really exciting. And for me, I think you'll be seeing me um, on and off the bench every now and again. (laughs) (laughs) I think we'll be seeing... run around and have a kick maybe. I think we'll be seeing another montage of your head coming off. (laughs) Uh, For anyone that hasn't seen Lily play in the VFLW, she wears Joel Selwood's number in uh, the cat's colours and she uh, looks like a mini Joel Selwood, gets her head taken off several times. <laughs> She's not afraid to go in there. So very nice, Lily. Uh, also, yeah, just before I'm we... Little. Yeah. <laughs> what? I just said I'm only little. Oh, just, yeah. you know, She's only little I now. Know, That's it. I was actually gonna. I was actually going to ask you that, Lily. Uh, Lucy and I were wondering, are you the shortest player in the AFL women's? I think there are uh, stand 158 centimetres, and I think there's maybe one or two that stand at that height too. So um, until you can the name them, there. I'm gonna say yeah. you're the shortest. Lily's the shortest in the AFLW. Yeah, yeah. Just I'll claim it. Any yeah. title's a good title. <laughs> That's yeah. fine. I was uh, just reading an old article actually, where your best mate Liam <laughs> threw you under the bus and said that you should wear. Uh, a helmet and be the Caleb Daniel of AFL Women's, and I'm on board this, Lily. Well, so the story goes that he told me, he's like, you should wear a helmet. I'm like, oh, that's nice, you know, <laughs> protective best friend, you know, Liam, oh, you know, protect yourself, you're playing against these big girls now. It's like, it's all right, Liam, you know, I've played against a lot of these people before, I'll be fine, I don't need a helmet, you know, I'm pretty tough, I'll be fine. He goes, no, 
not for that. He's like, just for like a marketing campaign. Like, that'd be oh gold. God. Like, you'd get so much media attention. <laughs> and so as soon as he said that, I thought that deal was off the cards and I was never to wear a helmet um, unless this circumstance got really real and I had to wear one at some stage. But, no, I love it. Um, no, I don't I think, think we'll gift you a helmet. helmet. I think you can be the <laughs> You should wear a helmet next. and we can have sports desks in 90.7. Yeah, we can sponsor you. Oh, nice. Yeah. Can it be hot pink as well? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> hot pink. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> All right, Lily, well, uh, thank you so much for joining us on this All Girls edition of the Sports Desk. Uh, best of luck for the weekend, mate. Thanks, Mel. Thanks for having me, Lucy. Pleasure. Enjoy your day. Um, Thank we... you, <laughs> Yeah, Lucy says thanks. Uh, we are going to go to a song now because we are all out of time on the sports desk. Thank you so much for joining us. The Friday crew will be back in uh, this Friday to talk all things happening in sport this weekend. But we're uh, doing a huge preview of the State of Origin game, so yes. stay tuned for that. And uh, keep an eye out for Lily Mithen <laughs> in that game. Unfortunately, not in her helmet, which is a bit sad. (laughs) Unless we can convince her otherwise. Uh, Righto, thanks Thank you so much, Lily, and thank you, everyone, for joining us on the Sports Desk this morning. This is Camp Cope with Jet Fuel Can't Melt, Steel Beams, and we'll be back on Friday.